Welcome in to day 36. Today is also the first day of week number six, so we are almost halfway through this thing. But before we get to the halfway point, we have one more week of progressive overload and heavy and hard workouts starting today, so I hope you're ready to get into the gym and crush it. Since next weekend, we are going to be evaluating any adjustments that we're gonna make for the second half of this trainer. I'm gonna break down three points that I want you to focus on this week to help you know what you will need to evaluate so that you are able to adapt going into the second half and continue to transform and get better by the day. But first, since this is a workout day, let's go into today's exercise that we're gonna break down and that is going to be the RDL or the Romanian deadlift, kind of a variation of the straight legged deadlift for the hamstrings, but you'll go ahead and see that here. I'll break it down for you how to perfectly execute and grow your hamstrings with the Romanian deadlift. Okay, so Romanian deadlifts, kind of an awkward camera angle here, but I tried to get it in a position where you could see everything going into it. And this is 405 pounds, so I was quite proud of this. And continuing to progress, we got the high end of the rep range with it. So Romanian deadlifts are kind of a hybrid between a straight leg deadlift and a traditional deadlift. You'll notice I'm initiating the movement by pushing my butt back keeping my lower back straight the entire time so it's in a safe position and having a slight bend in the knees. So rather than a conventional deadlift where you come all the way to the ground, with a Romanian deadlift, you also come just to about mid-shin and then reverse and squeeze the hamstrings to drive the exercise back up to the top. So here it started over again. You can see, once again, slight bend in the knees to keep them safe. This is why I prefer Romanian deadlifts over straight-legged deadlifts. Your knee is in a safer position. Butt goes back, stretch on the hamstrings, and then a squeeze at the top. Another thing to focus on with this exercise is make sure you're keeping most of your weight in your heels. This will allow you to better feel the stretch and contraction of the hamstrings and keep you more stable and with better balance. I mentioned it earlier, but again, I emphasize, keep the back straight and the core braced the entire time. If you need a belt as you get stronger on this exercise, use one. This exercise is not about weight, so while I am progressing rapidly and getting very strong in this movement, use a weight you can always control and feel a good stretch with. As soon as you get the point where you can't control it or you feel your lower back coming in and straining, you know you've gone too far and you're not ready for that weight yet. Make sure you can get the rep range and keep the weight in control the entire time. As always, if you have any more questions on that exercise or if you have a particular exercise you would like to see me break down in a future video, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the three things I want you to focus on this workout that will help you know when we do the evaluations this upcoming weekend, what may need adjusted going into the second half of the trainer. So number one, am I plateauing on any of these exercises. So when we go into the adjustments after the six week point, if you are plateauing for more than a week straight on any of the exercises, that's usually a good sign that it's time to switch up that exercise. Now, if you are signed up for the 12 week muscle building trainer, you can feel free to reach out to me on the app or message me and I can help you with the correct exercise exchange. Number two, are there any exercises that are bothering you or you're not able to get a great connection with anymore. So this is something I want you to check out during this week for the evaluations so that we can make any necessary adjustments at the halfway point. I'll give you an example. I have J impression presses, which are a variation of skull crushers in this program. However, as I was able to rapidly progressively overload on them for the past couple of weeks, it started to bother my left elbow a little bit. Now I have had tendonitis in that elbow in the past and I don't want it to come back. It's not worth pushing through just to cause any bigger issues in the future. 
So I'm going to swap out that exercise for another similar exercise for triceps so that I can continue to progress, still get all my tricep exercises in there without causing any further issues to my elbow. Lastly is just to evaluate your short-term goals based off of the progress you made the first six weeks going into the second and final six weeks, the second half of this trainer. So that can be whether or not you wanna to continue to pack on mass, if you need to up the calories if you've plateaued on that, whether you wanna solidify the mass that you've put on and bring the calories down more towards maintenance, give your body a break from assimilating so much food and focus more on solidifying and trimming up that muscle that you have put on, or if you wanna focus on perhaps cutting or doing a mini cut, if you feel like your body has gotten a little fluffier than you'd like or your goal has changed. So take a little bit of time this week to think about those three things. Are there any exercises that you need to swap because you've plateaued on them? Are there any exercises that are causing any injuries or issues? And what is your new goal, your short-term goal, going into this next six weeks? And do you need to adjust the workouts or nutrition in any way to accommodate that goal? Once we get to this halfway point this weekend, we'll go a little bit more into detail on how to evaluate what you've noticed throughout the week and make any adjustments that you need to. So in the meantime, I hope you have a fantastic workout today and I will see you for tomorrow's video.